Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another TFC third party review. Today I'm taking a look at the third member to be released of the Prometheus series by TFC. It is Hydrant. Um, firstly I'd like to thank Robot Kingdom for shipping this out to me super super quick. And secondly, what a pleasant surprise it is to get the actual torso figure um, released midway. I've... Uh, that's what's annoyed me about some of the other combiners. They kind of leave the leave the kind of torso figure till last, and you really want the torso figure. You want to be adding on your limbs. You want him to be building up slowly but surely on your display. Taking a quick look around the box, we've got this really really nice artwork on the front there, which is obviously their interpretation of Hotspot, and it looks phenomenal. Now this is the first box I've seen from this line because I got the other two figures from my good friend Marcus, and um, I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, I believe it was the TFC Ares figures. They kind of got rid of this uh, character art and they just had the uh, pictures of the figures and it, it was nice it looked good but I just I really really like the kind of comic book style they had uh, that's what I, that's what I had when I had the Hercules figures and I really like the fact that they've brought that back on the back of the hydrant box we've got him in his robot form got him in his vehicle mode and we've got him in his combined form and wow what a really really nice nod that is to the G1 toy. Uh, you've also got the information on the bottom here just telling people the various different ways in which they can contact TFC. On this side of the box we've got a photograph of the toy with a very grayscale kind of schematic version of the uh, character in the background. At the bottom of the box we have the basic warning labels basically do not eat your toys. And on the very top of the box we've got the ages 16 plus so this is not for child collectors and just Prometheus printed across the top there. Now I really like that they've got this nice big open window so we can instantly see just what he's going to look like in his robot mode. Straight out of the package let's take a look at what we've got. We get given this really nice big instruction manual again with that really nice artwork on there and something very very interesting that I've noticed in the instruction manual when it goes into talking about how to combine him for his limb mode, they have got uh, Gumball there forming what looks to be a hand. So you can have him as a hand. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know if that's what you guys think. That definitely looks like an arm to me. So they're saying you can attach this section onto there and that will help connect him as an arm. See, now that idea I like, it makes it a lot more Scramble City-ish. You get the, your standard third party card that we've been getting with most of the third parties. Again, with this really nice artwork on there and his tech spec on the back there, TFC Toys 2014. We get somewhat incredibly awesome looking rocket launcher. Um, he comes packing some heavy artillery, doesn't he? We've got what looks to be a massive chain gun. With a nice handle on there, which obviously looks like it's going to double up as a hose. We get a large extending, 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 three piece extending ladder. That is ridiculously long. Fire Rescue Ladder 34, that's really, really nice. Even some nice detailing on there. And we get a bag full of goody clips, which I'm assuming we use when we're putting this bad boy in combined mode. First thing you want to do to get this guy in his correct robot mode is just a slight bit of transforming of the uh, ladder section. Basically, just undo these clips which are plugged into there. This section will now fold down and it's just tabbed in and tabbed in there just on the inside. Fold this section down, just rock it down. It's on a nice tight hinge there. Rock it down so it is plush on here like so. You can just fold those back down if need be. And this section here is just going to plug into the back of Hotspot. To get his gun ready, I'll just flip open this grey handle. Bend this section around like so. That now covers the nozzle and he can hold on to both handles. And here he is out of the box. Uh, initially, I am very, very impressed. Uh, he's big. He's chunky. He is all manner. Of spectacular to look at. Um, really, really loving this guy. I'm actually surprised at just how big he is. He's a real big beefcake, and his poseability is, for his size, I believe, really, really good. Um, the ladder itself, 
I wouldn't say it hinders him at all. Um, although you can see it's touching the ground there, you actually can maneuver it on the actual hinge here, so you can pull it back further. I think it just really helps with his stability. Because he's such a bulky robot, he could have the possibility of being back heavy. But I think with the fact you can maneuver that ladder, uh, which I'll show you when we cover the articulation, I think that really, really helps. Uh, I love the detailing on this guy as well. He just looks like, if I was to re-envision Hotspot in today's world, um, with today's Transformers, this would pretty much be Take it. a closer look at that face. That is fantastic. Again, with the lovely, lovely blue light piping coming in through the back there. That's just an amazingly good sculpt. Really, really liking this. The colours are nigh on perfect. I mean, they are as pretty much as close to the original hotspot as we're going to get. I, I do love the gun. I'm not sure how in keeping a chain gun is with a protector bot. Um, <laughs> But I guess the guys need some big firepower. I mean, they've got uh, Ares and Hercules to go against. So, you know, I think a huge kind of chain gun. Sure, why not? It's as good a weapon as any. I love how they've kept the original kind of colours with the blues, the blacks and the reds. But they've gone along and they've highlighted the pistons. They've brought these out with the black paint. The actual black paint itself isn't an overly shiny finish. It's more of a matte kind of finish. And I think it actually looks a lot better. You've got the uh, wheels on here as well with the hubcaps painted up. Everything seems to have folded away really nicely. And it's just... Oh, it's just a cracking figure, it really is. Um, let's get some other figures in for a quick size comparison. Here he is with Masterpiece Prime, Classics Prime, and RC. And as you can see, I think he is a little bit too small to be included in your Masterpiece collection. It's just his dimensions. Yes, he's really beefy, but his head is a bit smaller. And he's just not quite aesthetically there. Um, but Classics-wise, phenomenal. I mean, that is nigh on perfect in my opinion. What do you guys think? Now I'm not really sure where to put these weapons on him in uh, bot mode, so I'm thinking that maybe when the other figures get released they're going to combine to form some sort of like arms unit and we could put the gun and everything on there and have it all up as some sort of big machine gun, that'd be really really now, good. Let's cover Hydrant's articulation. He doesn't have a ball jointed head but he does have a left and right swivel and that does go all the way around on a 360. He has Shoulder joints on a hinge here, so they go all the way up and all the way down. They're then on a rotation here. He's then got a separate swivel at above the uh, elbow there. This section can come up and out of the way to stop any prevention of clashing. So you've got that nice deep bend on the elbow, nearly 90, de yep, a full 90 degrees there, clips in nicely. Now the wrists, they slide in and slide out. There's no lock as they slide out. Once you place the gun in the hand, it completely locks the fist. You can rotate the fist all the way around, and it does have a pin hinge through the fingers, so you can rotate those in and out. The thumb is in a fixed position. The shoulder pads themselves can lift up and slide, therefore giving you a fuller range of movement on the upper arm. You can pull that out further. So there is no hindrance there whatsoever. If you come round to the back, that section there, the hydrant can, uh, the ladder can rotate and can pull in and out, which allows you to get a much deeper pose. Or if you want stability, you can bring that right in so it's about the same height as the heel spurs. Coming round to the waist, you have got a nice waist swivel. If I just move this section down and this section down, that waist can rotate fully. At the top, and at the bottom of that crotch plate. I think these sections are meant to kind of come round and just form part of the skirt, aren't they? Uh, you can move the legs forward and back. Really nice backward motion there. And out with their really nice clicky ratchet joints that we've come to love from the TFC Prometheus line. You've got an upper thigh swivel and a nice deep 90 degree bend at the knee. And of course a toe pivot and swivel. Nothing on the heel at all, it's kind of a fixed position. 
Now I really like the fact that they've done these shoulder pads on a separate hinge joint because that means you get that real good freedom with them so you can bend the arms down, you can get them in all these kind of posing positions and you can just rotate the shoulder pads back round to cover all of the hinges. And I think it just looks really good. I also really love that you've got the ability to extend that ladder at the back there so you can get him in some really dynamic poses. You can kind of have him running across your display without the worry of him toppling over. A transformation for this guy is pretty straightforward. First thing we need to do, we need to get all of his limbs straight. So just straighten up those arms on both sides. Straighten up the uh, legs. It just makes life a lot easier when we come to do it. Uh, your next step is to come around to the hands, making sure that the thumb is on the inside, push those hands in. And same with this side, make sure the thumb's on the inside to push those hands in. They don't go all the way in, they just go up to where the knuckles are. And for the uh, shoulder pad section here, what you need to do, you need to just pull that section all the way down. Once this shoulder pad is down, you can then flick this section up like so, bring that back up, slide that in, and then slide that shoulder pad across like so. Now these arm joints are extremely tight but extremely robust at the same time. You want to click this joint all the way up. You then want to, to compress it. So what I do, I push pressure on the black section here and then pressure on the front of the fire engine and push that until it pegs in. There was a peg just under here and just under here. And then you want to do, you want to just rotate this arm. It rotates at this hinge here. Rotate that all the way round so that the front of the calves are facing forwards. Now the head isn't on a spring, it's just uh, kind of latched in. So if you apply pressure on one side, then apply pressure on the other, it just drops down into that crevice. You can then bring the front section up, and again with this side, bring that section up as well. Untab this front cab section, rotate it round, and as you do so, you can bring these two sections together. They tab in together, they just plug in, they tab into the back of the cab, like so, and then there's a circle section on top of the roof just in here. You can plug that down, and that secures the roof section on. Flip up the chest piece, like so. That just slots into that groove. Now, I really like the storage option for the feet here. You flick the heel spur back into that section there, which just pegs in. You can then rotate the foot around, like so, and then you can just bring that back over onto this tab here, and that slots in nicely, covering up the back of the engine. Push and compress the legs together, and the feet also tab together at the end there. You then want to come around and flip up this tab here, and this tab here. I rotate just the lower waist, keeping that top section up. The next step, which again I think is pretty ingenious, is you open up this, you flip that like that, you think, ah, oh, that's not going to be anywhere near big enough. But then you split this section here, bring that round, like so, rotate that all the way round so that pegs in there. Well, that slides over like so. This then comes down and there's a tab on here. You just want to pop the combiner ports round the other way, he says, like so, just pop those up and into that crevice, and then this is going to tab nicely into here. These side panels down and just into the back section like so. Now keep this section here tidy and folded in for the meantime, because you're going to unplug this section from the top of the fire engine, like so, you're then going to bring it back on a hinge, it's now going to clear those sections there, and it can now plug in to the two securing slots on the back there, just tidy that up, tidy that up, lift this section up, we can now open up this section here, rotate it round, and have this as a kind of guide for the ladder, so that side there, and again rotate that one round and up, and then we can have the ladder collapse down like so. Now because this section is fairly stiff, I like to just disconnect it from the fire engine, 
rotate it all the way back around, push that one back in, and then secure it, and then we can pop that back on. The chain gun also just slides in and tabs in here, giving us a really nice big nozzle for that ladder. And there we have Mini's vehicle mode. Um, I really like it. That's a cracking, cracking fire engine. Really, really love it. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna keep the hose on in vehicle mode. Uh, I think it looks better with just the uh, ladder. It looks more G1, but they've done a really good job of capturing that kind of G1-esque American style fire engine. I just really, really like it. The colors are vibrant. The silvers are really, really nice. Everything's compacted. Everything's very, very well hidden. Um, there's these small gaps here. I'm not sure if that's me mistransforming it or uh, if it's just because the panels aren't quite the in the right place, I don't know, but it's barely noticeable. I'm just picking up on all the minor faults with this. I just think it looks fantastic. It really does. It's just missing lights and sounds. That's literally all it's missing, and it would be a big fire engine toy. You could pick this up and you could say, oh, that's a nice fire engine toy. You wouldn't necessarily think it was a transformer. Now, looking from above, if we move the ladder section out of the way, you can see, if you look down in there, You've got what's going to be the robot head, but again, it's all really nicely hidden using the same colors. You kind of hide and mask that section off. I absolutely love the front cabs, and I love the fact that it actually freely rolls. It's got really good rolling wheels on it. Here we have a Masterpiece and Generations figure for a scale comparison in vehicle mode. I think they both scale pretty well. Again, Masterpiece, probably a little too classic looking. Um, kind of very G1 in comparison to this. Uh, although this probably is the most G1 of the alt modes. And here he is with his brother in arms, the warning line and uh, Gumball. And they're looking so, 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 so good together. They really, really are. Now our next step with this guy is to get him into his combined mode. What we need to do, we need to start off with the uh, back section here. We're gonna need to just lift that up out the way. Uh, fold these sections back in so we can uh, clear them. Fold that back in and round so we clear it and lift this section up and over. Fold back these tabs, just untab them, fold them back. Fold the wheel section over like so. That's going to just tab into itself like that. You then want to plug the silver bit in. That just pegs in to the uh, blue section there, plug those in, like so. You then want to grab the waist section. This time we're gonna rotate the entire waist. So grab above the black section and rotate this round. So all of this crotch plate comes with you as well. Fold these leg sections back down, that just folds down, plugs into there, fold that section down like so. Then come around to the chest and there's a tab just on there. You're gonna fold that round and that's gonna plug back into the body. Now, using these extra hinges, you wanna just separate these legs, like so. Push this leg up at that joint, then down at this joint there, and then just collapse it in on itself like so. So again, up at that joint, down at that one, and collapse it in on itself, and as you're collapsing it, it's pushing these peg sections out of the bottom here. So let's just show you that. See that peg section there? There we go. Just rotate those feet up and out of the way, so you've got clear access to those pegs at the bottom. Now we separate these two front sections, bring the arm down at the shoulder joint, you then grab the front cab section, just pull off the lid there, you can then bring that round and that rotates round and goes into that position like so. Next step is just to rotate this section all the way round like so. What you want to do, you want to flick this section up like that and then this section comes across. You want to just collapse this section like so, have that down like that. And then what you want to do, you want to lift this hinge up and bring this one down like so. That's then going to sit on top and cover up his robot head like that. Finally, for the top half, you want to rotate this chest section around. Now, it is quite a tight fit over the peg there, but just pull that over the peg. That will then line up. 
and the chest sections themselves will peg, peg into the side of the blue section like so. Come around to the back there, grab this head section, pull that up, up and round you want to have it so it's rotated like so and then back round like that. You can then lift up the fire um, ladder section, plug that into those holes at the back there and you can just rotate the uh, back section around like so. Straighten out, here's a crotch flap. And finally, just flick up his combining port. You do need a nail or something though, just to get under there. And lastly, just swivel this entire leg assembly round like so, so that's all up out of the way. Now to get warning line ready for his leg mode. Basically, have him in bike mode, just flip open this section here, this is pegged together there, and just bring those round uh, this way, bend the hinge back, put them down to the sides, just put him over to one side for a second. What you're going to do, you want to get his foot plate, and you've got some of these little sections, they were in the, uh, the little baggie that came with the uh, hotspot, you're going to push that onto the back of there. Now they're really quite tight, so you're going to have to apply fair bit of pressure to get that on, like so. You then fold this section down, like so. And what you're going to want to do, you want to grab um, warning lines guns, and if we just disconnect the connector on those, we're not going to use that yet, we're going to use that for the big gun. And you bring these guns around and plug them in like so, and again in like so, just have those down to the side, and then bring him in, and with that white connector at the bottom, just place that on there like that. Now, one of the variations for Gumball is having him as an arm. Basically, with this, uh, the waist rotated round, the legs are flipped outwards, and you've got this section turned round. And basically, what you're going to do you bring in the section which formed the cannon and bend in this section over like so. You're going to plug that in like that. Then you're going to bring that down and that now raises that entire arm section up so it can now become a hand. But obviously I don't have a hand piece at all. Um, we haven't got one with this guy but it's really good to know that the option is there for these, um, well at least this guy to uh, be part of the Scramble City. Now for leg mode, you want to get him back into his vehicle mode and just pull open these sections and just fold them back on that hinge. They're going to rock back, rock back, rock back, just so they expose. Come on, go backwards, there we go. Expose that combiner port on the top there. Bring in the uh, back section with the rocket pack thing with the rockets attached. There's a tab, uh, where are, there's a slot just here. You can see that it's just here and just here, and they tab into those grooves on the back there. Just slide those in like so. Then you want to do exactly the same with his foot as we did with their uh, warning lines. Then you can just bring him in, he just pegs on like so. I like how this section now has really bulked up the back of him. And here he is in combined mode. Um, that's pretty impressive. It's looking fantastic. It really, really does resemble the G1 figure, um, but just with that really nice hint of modernism. It, it's, just, it's just good. It's really, really good. It's solid. The joints are all nice and tight. Um, it's not without fault. I've noticed that the, um, when you have the guns on the side of um, her warning line on the shoot, on the uh, boots, it does somewhat limit how far you can tilt him. Um, so you just have to kind of pull out the guns a little bit and just maneuver them down a little bit, and then you get that full range of um, swivel on the ankles. But doesn't he look great? I mean, how imposing is he? He's got like these shins, um, side sections here, they almost look like um, kind of part of a samurai armor there. Same with the sections that go up here. He's got a really, really nice striking head sculpt. Um, a few guys said that the face looked a bit derpy. Uh, I can see what they were saying, but if you actually have it in person and look at it, I think 
it's actually a really good face sculpt. That actually looks more like a grimace as opposed to a kind of smile. And I just really like what they've done. He's got the uh, rotation on the head. He's still got a waist rotation. He's got the movement on the skirt to allow his legs to go up and out. Attaches nice and securely. Now the legs, albeit extremely heavy, are still on a nice tight joint, which holds itself up quite nicely there. You know, I suppose if I really, really shake it, the ratchet might click down. No, no, it's not going to. Okay, cool. That's even better than I thought. <laughs> uh, you, of course, you do get the rotation around the top of the thigh there. Have quite successful knee joints, just make sure that the flap on uh, warning line is out of the way, just so that allows you to move that knee up and down. Of course, you then get the ankle pivot, which like I said, is hindered somewhat by these guns. If you remove the guns and you still get that nice left and right motion, forward and back. Just to give you guys an idea of scale, he is mahoosive. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, he is double the size of a Voyager figure. Uh, even more so, I think, double the size and, and a head again. And that's fantastic. That is classics, combiners down to a T. Now, at the moment, we don't have anything in the instructions to indicate what we're going to be doing with these sections here. So I'm assuming we're going to find out as soon as we get a uh, figure with a fist. <laughs> now, I just really need them to hurry up and release the other two because... Defense Saw's poor star cat cousins, yeah, they just don't cut it, do they? <laughs> uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching from myself and the Prometheus team. Goodbye.